This video will show you how to download occurrence data from the Paleobiology database and summarize it in Excel using pivot tables. So first we're going to go to the download data option on the main PBDB website. And we are interested in occurrences in this case. We want to keep things as CSV for ease of opening in Excel. And we're interested in all available parameters, so that's fine here. Scroll down. We're going to select, uh, let's look at bivalvia, so we're going to look at bivalves. Um, we're going to go for lump by genus, just because it makes things a little more consistent for us. Uh, let's narrow it down in terms of time to just look at Permian bivalves. We could look at anything we wanted. If we wanted to, we could limit by location, so we could change continents, for example. But we'll just leave it global for now. Uh, and then under output options, we're going to select a few uh, things that we're interested in, in learning more about in our bivalve data. So we're going to click off ecospace and time binning, and then also classification. And you'll see in a second what additional information selecting those boxes will give us. Then we're going to scroll back up, and you can see that all that information is now contained in this URL, and we're just going to hit download. Okay, so now we're going to open that CSV file in Excel. So here's our occurrence data in Excel. We're going to delete our header rows just to clean things up. And now we've got all of our data here. So we've got our accepted name, the rank, uh, the age constraints on this occurrence. Uh, we asked for classification information, so we get mollusca, class bivalve, order, family, and genus. And then because we asked for ecospace, we're also getting information about motility, life habit, vision, diet, etc., etc. And then over in time bins, what this is doing is it's basically assigning uh, each occurrence to a standardized stratigraphic paleobiology database time bin. You'll see that some of them are blank, and we're not going to worry about those too much. Um, that just means that there was some sort of a discrepancy between the data that was entered and how PBDB deals with time bins. And, and so for the sake of this analysis, we're not going to worry too much about those blanks. We'll just end up ignoring them. Okay, so now we want to summarize this data because there's a lot of it, and it's occurrence data, which means that a, a genus can occur many, many times in this uh, data set if it's found in different places uh, during the Permian. But we're interested in saying, okay, what's the relationship between you know, epifaunal organisms in the Permian? How many epifaunal organisms are there versus infaunal organisms, for example? So if we're interested in that kind of a question, it's pretty difficult to try to do that with this huge data set. And so that's where pivot tables can come in and be super helpful. So we're just going to select all of the data here. And then under um, data up top, which you can't actually see, but under data uh, at the top of Excel, you're going to go to summarize with pivot table. And it's going to um, already have selected, because you already selected the table or range, but if it's not selected, you can put it here. And we wanted to just put it into a new tab for us. OK, so this is what you see um, once the pivot table tab is created. Uh, the field names are over here. Under field name, you want to click off all the things you're interested in looking at. Don't worry too much about where they end up just yet. So let's say we're interested in how many families are in each motility category in each time bin. So we're going to go down here and we're going to select family. And we're going to select motility and we're going to select time bin. And all of those are going to show up in the values category automatically. So we want to know how many families are in each category by time bin. So we want time bin as our rows. So we're going to click time bin down here and drag it into rows. Now all of a sudden we have our time bins here. Now basically what it's showing us now is the number of families in each time bin and the number of motility um, assignments in each time bin, which isn't really what we want. So what do we do next? We want motility to be our categories or our columns because we want to know how many are in each. So we're going to drag motility up to columns. Now, all of a sudden, we have columns across the top, actively mobile, facultatively mobile, etc., etc. And it's showing us the count of families because count of families is in the values over here. The number of families in each of these time periods that are facultatively mobile. Super cool. OK, so we can close the pivot table builder now that we have our data. Now, if you want to do anything to this data, like 
uh, for example, organize these in temporal order instead of alphabetical order, which would probably be a good idea for any sort of analysis, we need to copy and paste this data into a new tab because in its pivot, pivot table form, you can't actually do anything with it. Um, and we're going to ignore all the blanks. So these, are, again, are the um, occurrences that I showed you in the beginning that weren't assigned to a time bin. We're just not going to worry about those for the sake of this analysis. So we can copy these rows, make a new tab, and paste them in. Uh, and then go back, oops, go back and grab our row labels. So there we go. We can reorder these in the correct temporal order, uh, and then we can uh, create different types of graphs, maybe looking at um, the relative abundance of different types of, of bivalve motility modes in the Permian. So this is how you use uh, the Paleobiology database to download occurrence data, and how you use Excel and pivot tables to summarize and analyze that occurrence data.